So what is Lens Blur? Lens Blur is a new feature introduced in Lightroom actually, but you can also access it with Lightroom Classic and Photoshop's Camera Raw because all of them use the same engine. So here we are in Photoshop and if you just go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter, on the right hand side if you scroll down, you will see Lens Blur. It says Early Access right here because it's kind of beta and Adobe is still working on it. Click on Apply to turn it on give it a bit of time and it creates as you can see a shallow depth of field effect. If you increase the blur amount, the background gets more blurred. It is not just that, you can control which areas to focus on. So if you scroll down, you see this icon right there, click on that and then if you click on the background, now the background is in focus and the subject is blurred. If you select that again and click on the subject, now the subject is in focus and the background is blurred. It does a depth analysis of your image which you can visualize by clicking on visualize depth. The brighter and warmer areas are closer to the camera whereas the purple-ish areas and darker areas are further away. From the camera. Now you can control which areas to focus on also using the focal range right here. Let's turn it off and as I move the focal range further areas are being focused and as we bring it to the left the objects closer to the camera are being focused. Now although this looks good it may not be 100% perfect. Have a look right here it missed out that little spot. So how do we fix that? There's an option for it and that is refine. Let's click on it to open it and then you have to decide whether you want to blur an area or bring an area back to focus. So in this case we need to blur this little area. So we need to choose the blur brush. You can choose how much blur you want to apply by choosing the blur amount. Of course you can change it later as well. And then you have parameters like brush size, feather and others. You need to be a little careful otherwise you'll have a little haloing effect. Now apart from this, it also has other features like bokeh type, boost, which we'll cover later in the video. Now that we know what it is, let us test this feature with a variety of images and see how good or bad it performs. Right from simple backgrounds to complex backgrounds, to objects and all kinds of stuff. We'll check if it's actually usable and if not, we'll learn how to make the most of it. Trust me, I have a trick up my sleeve that's gonna make this feature 10x better. And I'm super excited to share that with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, if you're looking for the easiest way to add animations like this and transitions like this to your videos, everything just drag and drop. You have to try Film Impact for Premiere Pro. All you do is just drag and drop the effect and it's done. Adjust the duration or values and you even get to randomize it. I've been using it for three years now and I still pay for it. So all of this animation that you see in the videos, it's with Film Impact. I've partnered with them for this video because I absolutely love it. And you can check the link in description to try it for free, absolutely for 30 days. You don't require any cards. There's no limitations for 30 days. Just try it. It's amazing. Don't take my word for it. Try it. Back to Photoshop and with our first example, let's try the lens blur first. Click on apply to turn it on. It did an incredible job. Let's increase the blur amount, but it looks good from this angle. As soon as you zoom in, you begin to notice that it does leave out a lot of areas. This area right here, that area right there. Now, of course, you can take your time to fix it with Refine, but again, it has its own drawbacks. So if you zoom in right here and if you open up a Refine, Let's say I want to blur this area because that's what it's supposed to be. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller and then you can take the time to paint. Now, the first drawback here is that it's very slow. It's going to lag. Secondly, it creates a haloing effect if you're not careful. So as I'm painting close to the edge, even if I get just on the line, it creates a halo effect around the edge. That is not good. Now, the biggest problem with this is noise and that is the ignorance of noise. Have a look on the subject's face. There is noise on the subject's clothes, everywhere, there is noise. But since the background is blurred, the noise is blurred too. There should have been a provision to add noise back, but there isn't and that is why it looks unrealistic when you zoom in. So as you can see, there's a lot of grain on the subject. And even if we get the selection right, there is none in the background. And the crazy part is Photoshop does have this function with blur gallery. So why not here? Now, let me share with you how to make the lens blur feature usable and way better. So here in Photoshop, let's start from scratch with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J twice. So we're gonna make two copies. The first one is the subject layer. This only will have the subject. And the second one is the background layer without subject, all right? So this is just the background with the subject removed. So in the subject layer, first of all, let's select that. Select the quick selection tool or any of these three tools and at the top, click on select subject. Now keep in mind, this won't be perfect as well, but it's way easier to fix it, way faster to fix it. And you have so many more options later on. For right now, with the selection active, click on the mask button. So now the subject layer just has the subject. Let's turn it off for now. 
background without subject layer should only have the background and not the subject. For that, we need to fill up that area by making a selection around the subject and leaving a little bit of gap. We don't have to make the selection all over again since we already have a selection. So let's hold the control or command, click on the mask right here to activate the selection and let's expand it a little bit. By going to select, modify and expand. Let us choose about 40 pixels. Hit OK, that's fine. You want to make sure everything is covered. So right here, this area is left out. So we might want to select the lasso tool right here. Hold the shift key. This makes it lasso plus. And let's just add this entire area. Also add the shadows as well. All right, now let's fill it. How do we fill it? If you don't want to use generated fill, you can also use content aware fill, up to you. So with the selection active, I'm just going to hit generate a fill and click on generate. There you go, it did an amazing job. You also have three options to choose from. Here's the first, second, third. I think I'm gonna go with the second one because with the third, we have a half cow. And now to keep things simple, you can merge both of these layers. So select the first one, hold the control or command, select the second one, and then press control or command E. So this is background without subject. Now you already saw that coming. The idea is to apply lens blur just on the background separately, but before we do, what do we need to do? We need to convert that layer into a smart object. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters. Why? So that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later. Let's go to filter, camera, raw filter, and again, turn on lens player. Let's apply. Now in this case, this is where they are standing. And that's what we want in focus. So click on the point focus button right there and click on this area. There you go, it's done. You can increase the blur amount to your liking. I'm gonna keep it this much. You can also boost the bokeh and choose the type of bokeh you want. In the second example, it will become more prevalent. Hit OK and you're pretty much done. All you have to do now is to turn on the subject layer and it's good to go. Actually not. It looks awkward, it looks unrealistic and the reason it looks unrealistic is because of the shadows right here. So how do we get that back? This area is already in focus so we can actually bring the original image back in that particular area. So select the mask right here, take the brush, take a soft round brush, make it larger and just simply paint that area in white. There you go, fixed. Now there's another problem we need to fix. This is all looking nice, but the background has no noise, the subject has noise. So how do we add noise to it? There are a couple of ways of doing it. You can go back to the camera raw filter and inside of effects, you can simply add green. Let's zoom in to see what it's doing. You can add grain just like this. If you want more options, you can click on this arrow right here and choose the amount of grain, the size of the grain and the roughness as well. Hit OK. So that's one way of doing it. Another way to add grain that is one of my favorites because it shows up in layers that is creating a gray layer. Press Ctrl Shift N, Command Shift N. A new layer dialog box shows up. Let's name it grain. And in the blend mode section, change it to overlay and check fill with overlay neutral color. Hit OK. This creates a gray layer with overlay set. Because overlay is a blend mode that hides everything that is 50% gray, you don't see anything right now unless you add something or do something to this layer. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK, and then go to filter, noise, and add noise. And now you can add noise to your liking. You might want to check monochromatic unless you want color noise. I'm going to set it to about 14%. Hit OK. Now the noise is pretty sharp. We need to blur it a little bit. Let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, right here. And about 0.6, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. You can play with these numbers, see what works best for you, and then hit OK. And at any point, since this is a smart object, you can change the noise amount. You can double click on add noise, hit OK, and change it to maybe 18. That matches a bit better. So that's how you add noise to the background. Now the problem with adding noise, whether like this or in camera, is that the noise is added all throughout, not just in the blurred areas. It is added here as well and in the blurred areas, of course. So you can create a mask of it. So click on the mask button right there. And then you can choose the gradient tool. And let us choose a gradient, basic gradient from white to black. And this is the blurred area, right? So you can create a gradient like this. By the way, I accidentally chose the radial gradient. Choose the linear gradient right here. 
and then you can draw the gradient to your liking. Also, if you want it to be a little more realistic, you would notice that in the bright areas, there is less noise and in the darker areas, there is more noise. So we can do the same for the background with blend if. So double click on the right hand side of the grain layer. Now we want to take the grain away from the bright areas of the underlying layer or the layers that lie under it. So in the blend if section, take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. And as we do that, it's going away from the bright areas. Have a look. As we move the slider, it's taking that away, but it's very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all apart. Keep it something like this. That way it is way more natural. So I'm gonna take it all the way to the left, hit OK, and then you can control the opacity of the grain as well. So that's how to make it better. Now you have all the opportunities to correct the mask to your liking. So I can go to the mask right here, use any of my techniques to correct all of this. For example, I can even use the quick selection tool, make a selection like this, and then maybe take a brush with black as the foreground color, just paint this area in. That's so much easier than working with the refined brushes inside of Lens Blur. Now, let me share with you an example with a super busy background and we'll learn a lot about bokeh here. So let's go to filter, camera, raw, filter. Let's turn on Lens Blur, let's see what it does. Now, of course, the background is very busy and it's hard for a machine to tell the difference between the hair and the tree, so it misses out on a lot of areas. But have a look at the bokeh, that is crazy good. Let's increase the blur amount and just boost the bokeh. Yes, we can use the boost slider to enhance or reduce the enhancement of bokeh. So as we increase the boost, have a look, the bokeh is more enhanced. As we decrease it, it's less enhanced. So I'm gonna set it all the way up and then you have different types of bokeh you can play with, different shapes. So here's the first one, here's the second one with the border, here's the third one, five blade, here's this one, looks like Funyuns, and here's this one. We have seen this kind a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna go with the first one and hit OK. Now, of course, this is not something we can use. The masking is pretty poor. It does miss out on a lot of areas. So instead of doing it this way, I worked on this image using the same method that we covered in the previous example, where we worked on the background separately. So let me load that for you. As you can see, it is much better. We get control of the subject mask and it's the same thing we did before. So here's the background layer. On top of it, using generative fill, I covered the subject then we applied lens blur on that. And then we added some grain using the Piximperfect compositing panel. By the way, I'm not marketing it here, but if you're interested, you can know more about the Piximperfect compositing plugin right here in this video. Now let's turn on the subject layer. This makes it so much more easier because now I can go ahead and zoom in, select the mask and work on the hair as well. You can erase a little extra and then you can choose one of the hair brushes. So let's scroll down. And these are some hair brushes I created. You can get access to it in the free version of Piximperfect compositing panel. Or if you wanna directly download it, I'll link that in the description as well. But the point is, you can pick white as the foreground color and just paint that hair back in with these brushes. It looks so much more realistic that way. So you can take your time with the mask, something you just cannot do with refined brushes inside of Lens Blur so much better. Now it is time for us to move on to a non-human subject like this beautiful flower right here. Let's turn on Lens Blur and it seems like it does a good job but then again if you zoom in it does miss out on a lot of areas. It did get the stem but it missed out this leaf right here. Here's the before, here's the after. This area should have been in focus. Also a lot of the petals are missed out. If you try to fix it by opening up a refine right here, choosing the blur brush and if you try to paint it, let's select the blur brush again. See, it creates a haloing effect and it's slow too. Even when the feather is zero, if we try to paint around the corners, see, it's just not right and makes it absolutely unusable for this example. Even for this example, it seems we have to use the previous method where we work on the background separately. Finally, let's give it a simple image and see how it does. So there's yours truly. Let's turn on Lens Blur. And as you can see, it feels like it did a pretty good job and I can directly post it on Instagram. No issues with that. Let's increase the blur amount and also boost the bokeh a little bit. But as soon as you just zoom in, have a look around the edges. It's not perfect. Now, if you look at it from this angle, 
it looks fine. Nobody would bat an eye. They don't bat an eye anyway, but let's not go there. Now let's try the same thing with the background separated. Now just for comparison, I applied lens blur all throughout the image and here it is. So this is the result with lens blur. As you can see, the edges are terrible. And this is our method so much better there is no weird thing going on around the edge of course it is not perfect but it's better than this one so knowing the traditional tools methods techniques basics concepts never goes to waste it's something you can always rely on the lens blur feature is a great innovation there is no doubt in it the way you can visualize the depth maps play with the range the way you can work with the bokeh settings the way you can select which areas to focus on it is just brilliant but it has tons to improve speaking of cons it has no provision for adding noise or grain for example here's the subject there is noise or grain on the subject and you blurred the background there was noise and grain in the background but since you blurred it the noise and grain is also blurred. So there should have been an option to add that back. There is an option to do that with blur gallery. So why not lens blur? Secondly, it's not very accurate. In most cases, you have to always go back in and adjust. And even if you try to adjust it, this brings us to our third and fourth problem. And that is, it's very, very slow. Sometimes it lags a lot. And on my Windows computer, right now you might have noticed that I'm recording on a Mac because at least on a Mac, it's working kind of okay. But on a Windows computer, it hanged my screen recording. I couldn't even screen record. Also, when you try to correct, there's this haloing effect we need to be careful about. Now, speaking of the positives, the great thing is you can use your traditional fundamental Photoshop techniques to fix all of the shortcomings that come with this feature. By just working on the background separately, you get the best of both worlds. It gives you a great starting point and the blur quality is much superior. So in this case, when I just applied lens blur in the background, have a look at the visualization. Take a look, even it's freezing on a Mac. I cannot do anything about it. I cannot cancel. All right, here we go. Let's turn on visualize depth. As you can see, it has considered this car on a separate focal plane this scooter and this car as well on a separate focal plane. So those nuances you only get with lens blur. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon. Five minute, Alexa, stop. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh.